Chapter 3, Section 3, Prove Lines Are Parallel. Now before we jump into that, let's, uh, and that's on page uh, 153 in your book, so please make sure that you have your book out and open as you follow along with me. But before we jump into Chapter 3, Section 3, flip back to page 136. Page 136. I want to continue to train you to know how to use this textbook, to make this textbook useful to you. It's a tool to help you to be able to understand geometry. So here we are in chapter three, parallel and perpendicular lines. And we've already been through uh, section one, identify pairs of lines and angles. And section two, use parallel lines and transversals. And now we're looking at Prove lines are parallel, and in just a moment we'll also do section four to find and use slopes of lines. Remember, rise over run, and then section five: write and graph equations of lines. So y equals mx plus b, standard form, uh, slope-intercept form. That's equals actually y equals uh, mx plus b. Uh, or a point slope form would be the third form that we have. So we're going to get into that in section five. And then section six, prove theorems about perpendicular lines. Okay, so that's what we're doing. That's our big picture here in uh, chapter three. Now you want to go back to page 153 in your book and chapter three, section three. And we are tagging along with these notes here. Our objective is I can use, please do put a circle around your main verb there, I can use angle relationships to do what? To prove that lines are parallel. So using these angle relationships to prove that lines are parallel. Our essential question will be, how do I use angle relationships to prove that lines are parallel? With a question mark, so just taking that objective and putting it into a question key vocabulary. Again, this will remind you we're pulling that from here in your textbook and as we kind of skim over this uh, chapter you'll realize on page 155 there's paragraph proof. That's one of our uh, vocab words. I think that's the, the main uh, vocab word. We'll also in contrast to that look at uh, two column uh, proof in just a minute. All right, so what is a proof? Well, a proof can be uh, written in paragraph form. So I'm not really answering the question of what a proof is, but just saying that a proof can be written in paragraph form. And if it is, it's called a paragraph proof. I guess I should highlight that, if you would. But also, remember, we've already been introduced to the two-column proof. So those are two different forms of writing a proof, either as a two-column proof. And you'll remember we had a statement and then reason were the, the two different columns. On the left we'd say a statement and then on the right we'd give the reason or the basis, uh, the justification for being able to make that statement. But now what we're going to do is a little more informal, uh, just have a paragraph proof and we'll explain it when we get there. Now let's look at these postulates. Remember postulates, uh, axiom would be a, a synonym, it's a uh, proof that, or a, a truth that does not need to be uh, proven, it's accepted to be true. And we're looking at the corresponding angles converse. Corresponding angles converse. Let's back up and remind ourselves again. We're talking about uh, three lines, three lines that intersect at two different points. And this line, in, th in this particular case, this is your transversal. This is your transversal, the one that cuts across. Trans means to move, to move across these other two lines that are uh, beside each other. And then you'll remember also that inside of those two lines that are beside one another is called interior. 
and the zone or region outside of those two lines that run beside each other, that's called exterior. So go ahead and indicate that on your notes there. And you'll remember again that if uh, the two angles are on the same side of the transversal, we, we call that uh, same side. For example, four and seven are same side interior or consecutive interior. And then if they're on opposite sides of the transversal, then we call that uh, alternate. So these six and three would be alternate exterior. Uh, two and seven would be alternate interior angles. <clears throat> now back to this, uh, and you'll remember, do pull out your notes for 3.1. 3.1, describe these different angle relationships. And then 3.2, remember we have these postulates about corresponding uh, angles, and if the two lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. And same idea with alternate interior, same idea with alternate exterior. But then consecutive interior said that if the two lines are parallel, uh, then the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So now we're heading over to, th or back to 3.3. .3. And now we're talking about the corresponding angles converse. So last time we said, if these two lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles would be congruent. But the converse of that, remember what the converse means? Think of a guy walking down the road with uh, converse sneakers on and he has them switched. So pull out your notes for 2.2. Use this as an opportunity, if you would please, to go back to your notes and review your notes. So in 2.2, what does converse mean? It means to, to switch. You're switching your hypothesis and your conclusion. That's converse. So instead of saying like what we did in chapter three, section one, mm, section, section two, where if they're parallel, then corresponding angles will be congruent. Now they're switching that, the converse of that is that uh, if those uh, corresponding angles are congruent, then they are parallel. All right, so that's the converse of the posture that we'd worked on before. And remember also that uh, if you see a sentence that has if then, that is a conditional, a conditional statement. Okay, so please do use these uh, as we learn new material. Use it as an opportunity to go back and review previous material. So again, what we're talking about, corresponding angles, for example, uh, angle six and angle two are corresponding because uh, angle six is the top angle in reference to this intersection, and angle two is the top angle in reference to that intersection. So those are corresponding angles. So if angle two and angle six are congruent, then we can we know that uh, these two lines are going to be parallel. Alternate interior angles, same idea. If, for example, uh, angles two and seven, these alternate, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, one's to the left, one's to the right, and they're interior, they're both uh, in between uh, these two lines that run alongside of each other. If these alternate interior angles are congruent, then these two lines will be parallel. Alternate exterior, for example, angle six and angle three, uh, if they are congruent, then these lines are parallel. These lines that run beside each other are parallel. And then consecutive interior angles. So remember consecutive interior would be angles four and seven or we could say angles two and five. But if angle four and seven, now is it, if we, if angles four and seven are congruent, then these two lines are parallel? No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying if these uh, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Again, go back to chapter three, section two, and remember that it was, if they're supplementary, 
or if they're if the lines are parallel, then they're supplementary. That was the initial theorem. But now the converse of that is that if they're supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So do remind yourself that uh, supplementary means that the sum of the angles equals 180 degrees. Then theorem number seven, uh, transitive property of parallel lines. All they're saying here is that if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. Let's see if we can find that here in your book. Here it is. So on page 156, page 156 is the description. Remember, if you're going through the notes, and, and do read the book. Please read the book. And and then use the notes to record your understanding of the book because it's a clear picture here. So what they're saying is that if uh, line P is parallel to line Q and line R is parallel to line Q, then what can we say about lines P and lines, uh, lines P and R? Uh, we can say that these two are parallel uh, with each other. Remember that's just the transitive uh, property. If P is uh, parallel to Q, and Q is parallel to R, then we can transit from P through Q over to R, and P is parallel to R. Okay, so we've got through all of those different theorems. Now let's do the examples in the book. Let's try to make this nice and quick. Again, you can pause this video and go back to it later if you want to. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot to also um, I introduce you to the uh, like a table of contents for that chapter. Let me also look over in your book to page 193. Page 193. Let me real quickly introduce you to these chapter summaries at the end of each chapter. These are a very helpful way to continue to read through this summary of the chapter so you can crystallize and kind of gives a summary uh, a nice pithy way, short explanation of what you've learned uh, so thus far in the chapter. So uh, use properties of parallel and perpendicular lines, that's what we're starting to do. Proving relationships using angle measures, that's what we're doing in fact right now. Uh, making connections to lines in algebra, we're going to do that in our next uh, section. And then here's a fuller uh, review, so here's a summary of kind of a summary problem. Uh, from section 1 in chapter 3 and on page uh, 195 uh, section 2 in chapter 3. So please use this resource to review uh, this this chapter. And now let's go back to 3.3 and do some of these problems here. We're on page uh, 153 and example number 1. Find the value of x that makes m parallel to, remember that symbol there means parallel, that makes m, line m, parallel to line in. So let's see, if, the, if these two dudes, well, let's not even state that. Uh, wh what is the relationship between these two angles? And it's corresponding. Even if these lines were not parallel, still, these angles would uh, be corresponding to each other. See how this lower one is in the top right position, this upper one in reference to that intersection is in the top right position also. So these are corresponding to each other and if these two lines were parallel then these angles would be congruent and the measure of the angles would be equal. So what they're asking is what value of x would make these two lines parallel. So what we would do is set uh, 3x plus 5 equal to uh, 65. And now we have a simple algebra equation. We subtract 5 from both sides using the subtraction property of equality. And then divide both sides by 3 using the division property of equality. And then x equals 20. So if x equals 20, uh, then the, the measure of these two angles is uh, equal and these two angles are congruent and these two angles are corresponding and anytime the corresponding angles are congru congruent then the lines that created those angles 
are parallel. Example number two. Do some snake examination here, snake patterns. How can you tell whether the sides of the patterns are parallel in the photo of a diamond back snake? Nice, nice to look at these guys at a picture, not a real thing. So here's kind of a, a blow up of that uh, section there. And you see that they have these red lines here. And so how do I know? Uh, how can I prove whether these red lines uh, run into the right diagonally are parallel? And the way I can do that is, and these are really hard to see, uh, it has a, a red arc there and a red arc here. So that red, those two red arcs tell us that those two angles are congruent. And so here I have one line that's cutting across these other two lines that are running beside each other. So what is that one line called that cuts across, that moves across those two lines? That's your transversal. So here's your transversal. And these two lines are interior uh, to the two lines between each other. And I'm sorry, those two angles are interior. And they're also on alternate uh, sides of that transversal. So those are alternate interior angles. And any time the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines that created those alternate interior angles are going to be parallel. Example number three. Prove the alternate interior angles converse. So prove that if two lines, here's your two lines, are cut by a transversal, here's your transversal, so that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So four and five would be your alternate interior angles. And if they are congruent, as it's marked here, see the arc, a single arc on both of these means that uh, these two angles are congruent with each other. Then the lines are parallel. Okay, that's what we want to be able to uh, prove, I think it is. So given angle four, no, no, no. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what we know. So we want to prove that these alternate interior angles, if they're congruent, then they are parallel. Then the lines are parallel. So given that angle four uh, is congruent to angle five, we want to prove that uh, these two lines, G and H, are parallel to each other. So start out with what is given. Angle four and five are congruent. And then we can say that angle one and four are vertical angles. And we know that uh, all vertical angles are congruent. So therefore, angle one is congruent to angle four. And what's the relationship between angle one and angle five? Uh, they are, uh, these two guys are um, uh, corresponding angles. So therefore, uh, if I can say, and I can, that uh, angle five is congruent to angle four, and angle four is congruent to angle one. Therefore, I can say that angle one is congruent to angle five. So let me show you what they're doing here. So they're saying that since angle five is congruent to angle four, and I can travel through angle four down to, and uh, since angle four is congruent to angle one, therefore we can say that angle one traveling through angle four is congruent to angle five. And of course, that's the transitive uh, property. Again, we're saying that uh, angle five is congruent to angle four, angle four is congruent to angle one, and therefore angle five is congruent to angle one. And I guess we're kind of given that even though we're proving the alternate interior angles converse, uh, we're given, uh, we're able to use, let me say it that way, uh, the corresponding angles uh, converse. So angles one and angle five are converse, I'm sorry, are uh, uh, corresponding. Uh,